Hello, this is Mr. Turek, and today we're going to go over how to do the Hackney photo collage. Uh, first, make sure you know where your photos are. Uh, I have all my photos downloaded from Google Drive. I took them on my uh, cell phone, and put them in this folder, downloaded them. So they're all right here, ready to go. I didn't rename them because it's, you know, not necessary for this project, but if you want to, you can name them in the order you took them so you can keep track of what goes where. And then you're going to open up Photoshop. To open up Photoshop, go to the Start menu, click on it, and then click on Adobe Photoshop or click on the shortcut to open it. When Photoshop opens up, you can go to File, New, or Create New over here. And when the new document dialog box pops up, uh, you're going to want to give your file a name. Again, last name, first name, middle name, and then your project title. And this is the Hackney Photo Collage. And you're going to want to make your image uh, rather large. Um, and I'm going to orient my image as a landscape because you're going to stretch your images probably across a landscape uh, format. If you took your images of a tall building or something, uh, you can do that, portrait style. But uh, be, be aware of how you made your photo collage. Make sure your resolution is 300 pixels per inch. And when you're ready, click Create. All right, before you do anything else, um, this is kind of special to this project. Uh, we're going to go to View, and we're going to turn off the Snap function. Uh, you're going to do a lot of rotating and other stuff with your images, and you just don't want that function on, so make sure you turn it off for this project. All right, once you have your file open, make sure you save your Photoshop file in a location somewhere on your computer, and make sure you save frequently. So go to File, Save As. You give your file a name already. Uh, it should be in the file name box right here. Make sure you give your file a name. And then you're going to save it as a Photoshop document. And right now I'm in the wrong folder. So I need to go to the Hockney folder. And that is right here. Okay, so now I know where I'm saving my Photoshop file. I'm going to click Save. And then whenever I make a, a change to my file or every couple of minutes, I'm going to hit Control S to save. All right, now we're going to place our first image. Uh, to place an image, you go to File, Place Embedded. And that's going to open up the Place Embedded dialog box. I know where I downloaded all of my uh, photos for this project, so I'm going to open that folder. I'm going to click on the first image. I'm going to click Place to place it in my Photoshop file. When your image is placed, uh, a couple of tips for navigating your file. Uh, there's a bunch of ways to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, the easiest way, I think, to zoom in and zoom out is use the Control minus and Control plus keys. Uh, there are the dash and the equal keys, but above them on your keyboard, is the plus sign and the minus sign. So think of those as control plus, control minus, and you can zoom in and zoom out on your image really easily. If you hold down the space bar, you can transform your move tool or whatever tool you're using to the hand tool. And when you're zoomed in really close, if you use the space bar to toggle to your hand tool, you can use your hand tool to click and drag around your document. Uh, so that's really convenient. If you want your document to snap back to its default size, hit Control-0, and that's going to just zoom it in normal uh, into your window, and that's, that's really handy to remember as well. Uh, if you don't like any of those options, you can use the Zoom tool. The Zoom tool is at the bottom of your dual box. Just click on the magnifying glass, and that'll switch to your Zoom tool. And with the Zoom tool, you can click and drag to zoom in or zoom out. Um, I don't really like using the zoom tool, so again, I don't use it a whole lot, but if you want to use it, you can use it. Whenever an image is placed into a Photoshop file, it's a smart object. 
the reason we know that is because if we go down to the layer panel, you're going to notice there's this little piece of paper icon next to the thumbnail, and that tells us it's a smart object. So we're going to rasterize this later layer so that we can edit it in the Photoshop document. So to rasterize the layer, we're going to right-click on it. We're going to go up to the option Rasterize Layer, and we're going to click on it. And you're going to notice that the Smart Object icon disappeared, and this is a regular layer that we can edit and change inside the Photoshop document. If we want to resize our image, uh, with the Move tool, by default, the Show Transform controls are checked on. So, what that means is, is your image has these little handles. Notice how my cursor changes depending on how close I am to one of these handles. This is the rotate option. If I click and drag while my arrow is like that, I can rotate my image. Uh, this is the diagonal scale option. If I use this, I want to hold down the shift key so that the original proportions of my image stay restrained. Do not distort your image. If I see you distort your image, I'll ask you to cancel that transformation and try again. Again, when you're using the Move tool to transform your images, make sure you hold down the Shift key, click and drag on the corner, let go of your mouse first, and then let go of the Shift key. The shift key is going to constrain the proportions of your image. And it's going to make sure that you don't distort your image. If you hover your mouse outside of your image, you can use that to rotate it. And if you ever want to scale it, make sure you hold down the shift key. Again, I'm repeating this multiple times because I don't want to see you distort your images. Make sure your images stay the original proportions. When you're done transforming your image, Go up to the option bar and hit the check mark icon or hit the enter key on your keyboard. All right, now I'm going to place an image. I'm going to transform it and I'm going to rasterize it all as one step. And I'm going to go pretty quickly and narrate it just so that you understand those steps we broke down before. So I'm going to go file, place embedded. I'm going to pick the second image, click place. When my image is placed, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Click and drag to place it over my other image. I'm trying to get it similar in size. And when I'm happy with the transformation, I'm going to go up to this check mark and click OK. And then I'm going to go over to the Layer panel, right click on the layer, and rasterize that layer. All right. You're going to notice one thing about the Layer panel. Depending on which layer is above the other in the layer panel, that determines how it overlaps in the image. So the image I just placed is on top of my previous image because that's how it's organized over here in the layer panel. I'm actually going to turn down the transparency of this layer so that I can see the layer beneath it and make it kind of line up a little bit better. So with this top layer selected, I'm going to go up to Opacity, and I'm just going to click and drag over the word to turn it down to about 70%. I can also use this drop-down slider. Uh, it doesn't really matter. If I want to, I could like put a cursor in here and put in like a, a type in a number if I wanted. Once I've turned down my transparency, you can kind of see the original image. Uh, beneath it, and you can see this transparent one on top. So now I can kind of like fine tune and adjust this top image and try to get them to line up a little bit better. And again, I'm using shift to constrain my proportions. I'm just trying to line up the car here as best I can. And when I'm all done, I'm going to hit the check mark up here to commit that transformation. I'm going to go back to the layer panel and I'm going to turn up the opacity back to 100%. And they look like they line up just a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's at least closer than it was before. Alright, let's say you've placed a bunch of images and you want a bit more space to play around with. 
Um, one of the tools you can use to make your canvas a little bit bigger is the crop tool. Uh, not only does the crop tool make images smaller, it can make them bigger. Uh, first things first, you're going to want to make sure that your background color is set to white. So go down to these foreground and background color uh, swatches and you're going to click on the switch icon. You're going to make sure that the background color is set to white. And then you're going to go up to the crop tool and you're just going to click on the crop tool. When you click on the crop tool, it's going to open up the crop window. And you can extend the crop window back a little bit. And then double click to commit. Uh, what you're going to notice is that there's a little bit of invisible uh, pixel back here. It's not all white. Uh, if you want that to fill in with white, it's pretty easy. Just go to your zero layer and convert it to a background layer. Layer, new, background from layer. Just for fun, let's say um, you can't get one of these images to line up with the other image. Um, I'm going to let you use uh, perspective warp to kind of distort your image just a little bit. Um, if you kind of rotated your camera weirdly, uh, you can use this to sort of line up the images perfectly. Um, but it can kind of get out of hand, so be careful when you're using it. Uh, if you want to perspective warp one of your images, make sure it's active in your layer panel. And then you're going to go to File. You're going to go to Edit, sorry. Edit, Transform, Perspective. And what you're going to notice is, is that when you hover your cursor over one of these corners, it doesn't change into those arrow icons. It changes into something else. So now when you do distortions, you've got this weird perspective skew effect. So you can use this to kind of distort your images however you want. And maybe that'll help, maybe it won't. Just kind of play around with it a little bit. Uh, essentially what it's doing is it's distorting it uh, within a 3D plane. And that can kind of help you line up some of your images if you're having trouble. Uh, continue to do all these steps to sort of place and arrange your images. And make sure you fill up your entire document with all your images and create your Hockney photo collage.